All right, just a, a quick video update. I haven't done one in quite some time. Uh, of course, we had a little bit of damage on our tomato vines uh, during the winter. We had a really several hard freezes here in Texas. But looking in here, got a couple brand new tomatoes here. A third one, and I saw another one earlier, just right in this area. I've got lots of blooms. We're blooming all over the place. So I'm quite happy with that. Lots of blooms in here. My lettuces, I've got multiple types of lettuces that are just going berserk on us. And these, for the first uh, four, five, six months, moved really slow. Everything did, of course, as, our, as this system matured. Some kale here that fell over and I stood it back up and it's kind of, it's got to grow back to get where it's growing up right. If you look right over here, you see I've got a couple of strawberries there. I've got some uh, some Swiss chard there. This is interesting. This is this came from a garlic clove that I planted. In the last probably three weeks, it has exploded in size. Um, let's see, cilantro. This cilantro I keep trimming back, and it takes about two weeks, and it's it's ready to be cut again. It smells marvelous too. More kale right in this area, and this this stuff has been here for a while and it just barely grew. I don't know if you can see or not, but I've got minor discolorations in the leaves. We've got a little bit of an iron deficiency. I need to add some iron to the water. Not a big deal, just need to do it. More kale. Uh, let's see, Brussels sprouts right here. The Brussels sprouts have just gotten, let me back up. I'm now about three foot away and they're just, they, they are huge. I mean, just unbelievably huge. And they've done this just recently. Now here's some spinach. I bought a, a flat of spinach today, about a flat of uh, Swiss chard, uh, and this is the Bright Lights mix. So you get different color Swiss chard, and of course the uh, strawberries. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't recommend very many plants, but this particular strawberry, let me get the tag out. This one came from the uh, Washington State University. If I get it close enough for you to see, that's what you're looking for right there right there those strawberries are not just frost resistant but I've actually had snow come down six inches deep on these plants with strawberries on them go out you knock the snow off the sun comes out the rest of it melts off the berries aren't hurt the plants aren't hurt and you keep right on producing um, got some basil here that was also hurt during the winter in our freeze uh, it pretty much killed it back and over here I've got a couple of more and this one these two have just been overgrown let me back up so you can maybe get a better shot this basil and this basil also were just, just killed by the cold uh, and they have since come back out doing really well but you'll notice I've got Brussels sprouts around them the Swiss chard look the size of that leaf and then let's see if I can get another one up here the size of that leaf right there that's to me that's just that's huge and it's constantly got new leaves coming out and looking down here in the very bottom right there I'm assuming that's more Swiss chard leaves coming out I'm not real sure exactly what's going on here but it's in multiple places if anybody has any idea what's happening there do I have new plants that are coming out that I could actually pull off at some point and uh, transplant and have more Swiss chard uh, or are these just suckers that need to be killed back I honestly, I don't know on that. I'm told this is arugula right here. And these, like everything else, stayed very small. And again, you can see the iron deficiency in these leaves. But they were very small. Uh, and then just a couple of weeks ago, everything just went explosive in here. I mean, it's just gone nuts. Redina lettuce right here, which is, has a beautiful color. Nice, waxy color. Beautiful. Um, our leeks... Uh, for those of you that saw us plant these, they were actually cuttings. I've got a seed pod right here. Both of them, I've only got two leeks, and both of them have seed pods. And they're just absolutely huge. This thing is, it's a, it's a jungle in this greenhouse. But here's the other seed pod right here. More Rodina lettuce. If you look down in here, uh-oh. Looks like my father-in-law's been in here getting a little lettuce today. Which is exactly what everybody's supposed to do. If they're hungry, come pull something. Our seeding media where we, we seed right here and then we'll transplant, transplant these plants out into the grow beds. I want you to notice right here I've got a celery. 
this celery came from a cut. So we went and bought celery, cut it, cut it off, ate the celery, and then we planted the base. And it has just done marvelous. Now, several months back we did the same thing. And you can see where we've been cutting off of the celery. And those cuts were actually down really close to the base and they continued to grow. That's how well the celery is doing in our system. And we've, we've been overtaken by this one tomato vine. And I'm looking, I don't see any actual tomatoes on it. If it doesn't start producing pretty quick, I'm going to take this vine out. Uh, I've got a leak in my grow bed um, on this one that's down at the drain for the uh, bell siphon. I've got I've to dig it out anyway. So if I don't start getting some production off this vine pretty soon, I'm going to pull it out and go ahead and fix my leak. Onions, the, these are just cut onions that were cut at the base, left about three quarters of the base, three quarters of an inch. Stuck it in this gravel. And it's just pea gravel is all this is. Uh, if you dig around there a little bit, you'll find lots and lots and lots of baby worms. They're just all over the place. Look at my water temperature. Last night, we got down to 34, and our system water temperature actually dropped to 50 overnight, which it shouldn't have done, but right now, I'm not sure you can even see that. Today, running our solar water heater, we're back up just a hair under 70. It's a couple degrees below 70, so about 67, 68. And that's a solar water heater. Then all I did was take PEX tubing, paint it black, I hung it in the top of the greenhouse. So we only run it during the day, obviously, because that's the only time we have sun to heat it up. But we run a, a pretty good flow through it, and it really heats the system back up uh, when we need it. Now, during the winter, I've got a uh, hot water heater element built on PVC pipe, which I forget who, who came up with the idea originally. It uh, wasn't me, but uh, we, we use that idea, and it does a marvelous job of bringing your water temperature up. We've got a, uh, a thermostat on it, so we can maintain 70 degrees, no problem, uh, for water temperature. And I think that has had something to do with this explosive growth as of late. And I mean, it's just, it is a jungle in here. Absolutely love it. If you're hungry, come to my house. Brow, you know, just, just graze through here like a cow. It's great stuff. Of course, I've got this poor... Uh, Vinca that I'm trying to save, the, the, the freeze caught it, it was outside on the porch, brought it in here and uh, we've been feeding it some aquaponic water, it's starting to come back out on one side, of course this side is dead, I'm just going to have to cut it back and, and let this thing grow back out. Um, and that's about it, uh, other than putting in our new plants, which you saw the seedlings, go back and look at some of that. Of course this celery, I'm going to be transplanting this over to the main bed with the other celery. Then I've got different types of uh, lettuces in here, which this lettuce is the same as this. You can see it's a nice meaty leaf. Uh, and it's more arugula, came out of that mix. And what this was is just a mix, and I threw it in there, and that's what came up. Uh, let's see, right here, I don't know what that is. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's something that's growing well, so I'll transplant it, and we'll see what it does and figure out what it is later. If somebody happens to know what that is. If you recognize that leaf, let me know. I'd love to know because I've, I've planted several different things in here and they didn't come up. This came up on its own and uh, so I, I didn't have a tag there to tell me what it was. It's the only one I've got, so uh, not real sure what it is. It could be a spinach, not real sure. If anybody knows, if you recognize the leaf, please leave a comment and let me know. Love to know. And that's about it, folks, uh, other than the fish, which... You can't see right now as the sun's going down and it's pretty dark in our fish tank. Yeah, if I turn the light on we probably could see them, but I hate to bug them. I'm fixing to feed them. Uh, and they just go wild when you feed them. We use uh, a channel catfish, a U.S. channel catfish. And they just, they're, they're growing great. They're real healthy. Uh, out of 100, I've only lost 5, so I've had a 5% death rate. Um, part of that was my fault. And then, you know, some of it was just natural death. It happens. Digging through here, I see some more cilantro down in here that is actually being choked out because it's not getting enough sunlight. So I may actually have to dig that out and move that to a different grow bed with the other cilantro and get it all together. Anyway, um, that's it in our solar water heater. You know, I, I talked about that earlier. That's our flow that we have coming out. Today, it was only about probably 85 degrees in the greenhouse. 
But even with this water flow, we were running with the sun hitting the piping, and the piping's painted black. We were pushing about 98 degree water coming out. So that's that's what helped us raise our temperature so quickly uh, throughout the day was having that that hot of water coming out uh, and dumping right back into our sump tank, and then it gets evenly distributed throughout the system. And that, that uh, makes sure we don't heat up our, our fish tank too quickly and, and put the fish in shock. One thing about these strawberries, and, and it's a bad thing actually, it breaks everybody's heart. Uh, these strawberries actually have to be picked off. The blooms will be picked off. I want this plant, once I do plant it in our media, I want them to focus on root growth, not on making fruit. So. For the first uh, three or four months, there won't be any fruit that I'll allow to, to come out on these. Any blooms I see, I'll go ahead and pick them off. Let the plant get a good root system established, and then uh, I'll start letting it bloom out and make berries. But like I said, these will, will even outdoors, will make berries all through the winter. They're summertime, wintertime, it doesn't matter. They love it all. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great time with their aquaponic system. If you have any questions or comments, please. Let us know. Uh, we'll do the best we can to, to answer or help. And if it's not one of us, uh, there's so many members now in our in our group, over 900 people, that uh, somebody will probably have an answer that'll help you. Have a great weekend.